Stirring the Cauldron. Now, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Hey, Merry Meet, everybody, and welcome to Stirring the Cauldron here on the Para X Radio Network. The opening song tonight was Magic by Spiral Dance, and that's what we're going to be talking about tonight with my guest, Judica Illis. Now, Judica is an independent scholar, and I love that. I love independent scholar. I like that. Um, she's an educator and author of several books of folklore, folk ways, and mythology uh, about the subjects of magic and the occult, divination, diverse spiritual traditions, witchcraft, and the paranormal. 
She's the author of four popular encyclopedias that are really heavy. If you carry them around, you'll see. They're almost hernia-inducing. But that they include the Encyclopedia of 5,000 Spells. And that's kind of what we'll be focusing on tonight because I was nosing around her Facebook page a while back and I saw that she was doing a workshop called The Secrets of Spellcasting. And my mind started doing a happy dance. So I asked her to come on tonight to talk about it. And it, as always, if any of you have any questions about spellcasting for Judica, please send me a private note in chat, and I'll pass them on. And in the meantime, hi, Judica. Welcome back. Hi, Marla. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I am I am really happy. happy to be here. Well, good, you know, because, well, I would say if, if it was somebody else, I'd say, yeah, sure. But I kind of know that you're truthful, so this no, is good. No, no, I'm sincere. <laughs> And we really should take the 15 minutes before the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we um, usually before the show, people, um, Tim brings in the guest and we could just kind of chit and chat. And today Tim was uh, singing, which, you know, I'm lucky anybody's still in the chat room because it it has this wave that might, you know, get <laughs> people's interest. But He sang very well. He did. Oh, you lie. No, ah. no. <laughs> it brought back a childhood memory. So. That's true. He did. Yeah. So, you know, it's like frickin' frack on the road, and then we bring in the guest, and by the time we get to the show, everybody's kind of, you know, calm down and peaceful, right? Right. If not, we're going to have to cast a spell on Tim. <laughs> Which is a great segue to bring me back and, and, and get serious for a minute. So, you know, this this really is a great topic for a workshop or a yeah. show, you know. And when we talk about the secrets of spellcasting, we're not necessarily inferring that spellcasting is something done behind closed doors in a very hush-hush manner. Oh, and okay. that, well, it could Sometimes. be at times. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, people think, well, okay, this is all secret, and if we give away the secrets, we're going to either be banished to Boogie Land or have a house fall down on us or something. <laughs> um, secrets in this respect is more like exploring the ingredients and techniques technique. to help. Yeah. yeah to I help. Find, make- um, it, it is the way spell books are written. And I mean, I and I, I'm speaking of myself. When mm-hmm. I wrote the first draft of Five Thousand Spells, and that was, it was a pretty harrowing book to write. It was not a, <laughs> it's not a. It, we got in over our head. No one involved with that book at the beginning. We, we, none of us are mathematical, and mm-hmm. no one thought how many spells can you squeeze on a page. Uh huh. And it was originally, I mean, I, I had the contract, it was supposed to be 450 pages. And it wow. was supposed to be done by a certain time. And, you know, and, and 100 pa- I wrote the introduction and I was 100 pages in and it was clearly not going to be a 450 page book. And, <laughs> and you know, you know, you're, just, you're supposed to you know, more or less stick to your contract. Mm-hmm. And the, I didn't write it in any kind of a consecutive order. I started with the spells. I sort of like the best and spells that I I have two smaller spell books published before this, um, now known as Pure Magic and Magic When You Need It. And mm-hmm. when you publish a book, you know, unless it's only in a digital format, page count matters. And so mm-hmm. I I was able to you know, I, I knew we had four hundred and fifty pages and I went straight for these really lengthy Moroccan spells that have, you know, 52 <laughs> steps and, and 100 ingredients and, and poetry. And I, I love those spells. Mm-hmm. I, I, they're not necessarily feasible. You know, they're mm-hmm. not the most um, accessible spells. But that was kind of like my PhD in spellcraft. There's just a beauty and a rhythm to the spells, and I just, I appreciate them so much. Um, but you know, then we were, you know, then we were up to 250 pages. The thing with the secrets of spell casting is that there are things that if you want to be successful, you need to know, but there isn't necessarily room to put them. You know, you can't keep repeating the same thing over and over again before every spell. 
And mm-hmm. spell, books, spell books are written as if, you know, they look like recipes. And I think, you know, I always compare it to um, if you go to the supermarket and you buy a cake mix or a box of mac and cheese and you follow the instructions, you pretty you can pretty much guarantee that you will get something that looks like the picture on the box. And, and spells are more complex. It's it's a mystery. It's an art. It's mm-hmm. not a science project. And mm-hmm. there, but there are things, and and there is no such. You know, anybody who tells you that a hundred percent of their spells work a hundred percent of their top of the time mm-hmm. is is like feeding you a line, mm-hmm. because nothing works a hundred percent of the time. Nothing, no. nothing is guaranteed. And yeah. and I think that kind of detracts from the beauty because it's not supposed to be mechanical. It's a mm-hmm. process. Mm-hmm. And the bigger picture with spell casting is it will lead you to find your own power. Yes. And and to discover who you are and to sort of peel the you know, the layers of the onion and see, you know, who are you deep inside, who are your allies, what are the plants, what are the crystals that will work with you, who are the spirits that are hovering by you, waiting, you know, waiting for that contact. And mm-hmm. that is the bigger picture. And, of course, the smaller picture is sometimes we, you know, we need spells to do very practical things for us. Mm-hmm. And if you, if you have a comprehension of what the process is, it just makes it more likely to work if you want it to work. Yeah. There, you know, when I, because I've done two spell books now, and just writing up the spells, you know, people would think, oh, well, that's easy. You just kind of put in what you want and this and that. But one of my kind of, yeah, one of my pet peeves is people who can, anybody can write a spell. That's easy. But they don't realize that when they're writing a spell, it may not just if you're not specific, if you're not precise, if you don't word it correctly, um, and particularly if it's a negative spell, mm-hmm. other people can get hurt. You know, you're aiming at John Doe because, you know, he cheated you out of something, and you write a spell, well, you know, let's get John Doe. Well, you could maybe get John Doe kind of the way, the back way, because your spell might hurt his family, which would hurt him, you know, or, you know, innocent people are going to get um Well, I always, I always recommend um, doing positively. I mean, it, it's just more, it is more likely, you have more control if things are worded in a positive fashion. And well, yeah. So in that situation, it's important for you to get your money back. Perhaps it's important for you to have justice. Mm-hmm. Um that may be more beneficial than targeting someone where you may not actually know the whole story. Exactly. You know? But you know human nature. And a lot, I mean, (laughs) I don't mean to sound like a a snob, but there's a lot of people that should not be doing this at all. Because they don't... I'm shocked at the stuff I see online. I mean, i got to say, I'm shocked at the people um, who are talking about, you know, you know, my neighbor insulted me, and I'm going to do this on this to them. And it's uh-huh. like, uh huh. Yeah. You know, what 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 are the four? You know, to know, to will, to dare, to be silent. It mm-hmm. is. It is. And, and there's a reason for that beyond tipping off the target. <laughs> it, it is also. It's about energy. These are uh-huh. all energies, and and talking about it too much. There's a dissipation of energy. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you lost the focus. Yeah, it's it's it, it is so complex and yet yeah. looks so easy. Yeah, and I think people kind of get a little confused one way or the other. And you know, the other thing is, okay, so I believe that spells, simply put, are intentions that we put out into the universe, just like prayers. Um, when I mention to people that they do spells every day just by mm-hmm. praying or even, you know, yelling at somebody, cursing at them, you know, hey, you, you know, you just ran over the curb or something, you know, something stupid like that. Um, you know, but a curse is a spell as well. And, and, but people get uneasy when you can, when you say, well, you know, you do spells too. And they go, <gasps> but, um, I, you know, I mean, that's one of the things we actually discussed at the Holy Rose and Raleigh. That's very, you know, it's interesting that you're bringing this up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, 
uh, the difference maybe in some ways is that we use a few more props. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, you well, know. I, I think the way, I mean, I think the issue is that people use magical energy all the time. Mm-hmm. And they're constantly reacting to magic. And, and that is the important thing to understand that these are all energies. Once you get into the spell casting, there's, you know, ideally, you're doing it consciously. A spell is a conscious attempt to harness that magical energy in a, in, in a direction that you want it to go. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, it, it, there's a lot of sloppy, unconscious, essential spell casting. And, mm-hmm. um, I think you can you can measure the effect by you know if you're depressed all the time and you're unhappy and nothing is going the way that you want it to go. Um, it, one of the things to do is to to sort of pull back and take a good look at your life and, and at these energies. What kind of energies are you know? In, it's, you know it. It, essentially, it's riding the horse instead of having the horse like you know pull you around. <laughs> um, it, it's it's taking command of the situation. Everything, mm-hmm. the world is just full of these energies, mm-hmm. colors, sounds, aromas, people, you know, living beings, yeah. plants, y- you name it. If if you can, if it's there, if it can be named, it has some sort of both a group energy and, and, and an individual energy, a specific mm-hmm. energy. In other words, there's, you know, cats have a kind of an energy, but some cats have a little more or a little less or a little bit different. And, you know, some people innately have more of this magical energy than others. Um, but but it's, it's an energy that can be increased. It's an energy that can be blended. And that's, you know, all those random ingredients, they're not random. It's a matter of of, of joining those energies together, um, and, and it can be depleted. And if you do a lot of spell work, you should really, really be working on keeping. You know, it's like refilling the gas tank. Uh-huh. You know, in in the hoodoo terminology, they call it working. People are not. You know, they don't necessarily use the word witch, but they'll use um, the word "I'm a worker." Are you a worker? And you should be tired after a spell. Mm-hmm. If you're not, if if you don't feel like you're tired, you haven't done enough. You haven't mm-hmm. put your, enough of yourself in there, because mm-hmm. each of us has an energy. And I'm, you know, my books are all about teaching you how to do it for yourself. I mm-hmm. am not a great lover of um, paying other people to do your spell casting for you for a whole variety of reasons. I, and mm-hmm. the most basic being that you give your power away. Well, I was just going to bring that up because, you know, anybody that wants to do a spell can go on the internet. You know, internet is just full of information that is just sure. right on a thousand percent, right? <clears throat> and um, so, you know, you can go to a thousand different Most websites sure. <laughs> <laughs> and you can pick a spell because, you know, Lady Hoo Hoo is does hers and you know this and that and they're they're out there for free too i mean you don't even have to pay somebody to do it but you know there's these spells well, okay well i need a spell for this i'll go look this up i'll type it in i need a spell for blah and there it is but see the thing that that scares me about that is you don't know these people number one you don't know the energy that they put into writing that you know i mean they could all be like you know negative psychotic people um and you talk their spell and you could end up just like them i mean in a sense that it won't work well and and you know it's just i always say if if you can write your own spells it's better but if you can't find somebody you trust you know like like in your books or you know things like that i mean Um, go ahead you you know i think the most dangerous thing with the spell is that they work Mm -hmm. i mean that that is that is the issue is that they do work People are often, and I, I do, I get a lot of email, you know, people are afraid of, you know, all these, you know, evil centuries of evil press and terrible propaganda against magic spells. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, I will tell you that, I, in my opinion, I, I do discuss this in the Encyclopedia of Witchcraft. I think it's been more than in 5,000 spells. I, 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 you know, after a while, I can't remember what's in which book. But, well, they're so big, how can you? <laughs> well, you know, well, kind of one book is, is a reaction to the next. You know, one, each one is sort of builds upon the next one. They stand alone, but, you know, in my head, I'm carrying, 
you know, what, what I didn't have time to write in the last one. But the, the goal of spellcasting is to improve your life. Forget all that, you know, I love Charmed. I enjoy watching it. Mm-hmm. it and, you know, Encyclopedia of Witchcraft is in it in the last season, and it's, I, you know, it's one of the, the highlights of my writing career. It makes me so happy to know that, you know, it was on that show. But they have also done us a terrible disservice because, you know, the, the people who created that show were not spellcasters. It, it, it's entertainment. And yeah. yes, 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 spellcasting is for personal gain. It is to make your life better. If you mm-hmm. have tons and tons of money or, you know, brute strength or whatever else, there are a lot easier ways to get what you want. Spellcasting is for it has been traditionally the domain of the disenfranchised, of people who, who, who are oppressed, who cannot get what they want. I mean, I'm reading this just this, you know, it's on my Facebook page, but I mean, it's from the New York Times, this horrific mm-hmm. article about the rape theology uh, that, that is, you know, characterized by, by that group that has hijacked that uh, beautiful goddess's name, and those women need protection. Those women, you know, I, you know, you know, that is why protection spells exist. That is why curses exist. The original curse was not intended to be hateful. It was meant to stop some, you know, it was meant to stop a rapist. It was meant to stop someone who could harm you or harm your loved ones, and you had no other recourse. Because mm-hmm. if, if you have other recourses, they're they're faster and easier. And more predictable. Mm-hmm. So, well, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, I just heard, I mean, I heard, um, people always say that use magic after all mundane methods um, are worked out. You know, that if you can't... I, I know, I, I actually, you know, that, that's because this is, I hate the word supernatural. I know. <laughs> you know, because... Metaphysical, because, I like that one. Yeah, well, because, I mean, because it, it is... As, as if it's not natural. It is, like, so natural. Nothing is more natural than magic. Magic, mm-hmm. the magical arts, that is the primal, the primordial human art. All you have to do to be a spellcaster is be a human being with an emotion. You mm-hmm. have to want something or be afraid of something. Mm-hmm. In any kind of a strong... It, it is that emotion that fuels that spell and that is all you need everything else is extra that is what you need you have to formulate your goal and that I think is what Marla was saying before about language and one of the benefits of being a spellcaster is your ears will become so much sharper you will Mm -hmm. hear what people tell you people curse you every day and you may not realize that they're doing it people who love you will say things like Oh, you're not good at that. Oh, that dress makes, you know, you know, oh, you will never amount to anything. You can't do that. You know, you're just like your, you know, your drunken father, or, you know. <laughs> Th- those are all in their way curses, and they are words that control. And mm-hmm. depending, a lot of us hear that stuff so often. Mm-hmm. You know, I was in an, abu- in an emotionally abusive relationship. I didn't even know I was in one. It, it took me a while to realize, oh, you know, this isn't how people speak with each other or how people <laughs> should speak with each other. Yeah. Because if, yeah. if you come from, um, you know, you know, I come from, you know, family-wise, I come from very gentle people, physically gentle people, mm-hmm. but, they, but they do use sharp words to make you behave and toe the line. Yes. And so if you have always had that, you're, you know, you're vaccinated, you're, you're accustomed to it. Spellcasting will open your ears to that. You will mm-hmm. hear who is encouraging you and empowering you, and who is, you know, putting you in a box and locking you up. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. is maybe the most valuable thing there is. Formulate your goal. I mean, for example, the example you gave before John Doe. Mm-hmm. Do you want your money back, or? Does it, at this point, it doesn't matter. You're just so mad at John Doe. What you really want to do is see him suffer. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, narrowing down what is it that you actually want. Yeah. That, and that is, in some ways, the hardest part of the process. 
formulating it. Formulate it in your own words. Make it simple. If you say it and it doesn't feel right, say it again. You know, it's it's like sculpting. It's like sculpting away. You know, a lot of sculptors will tell you that the, the, the statue is actually in the stone. You just have to carve away until you find it. Mm-hmm. Very much how you articulate a spell. And exactly. online, if there is a spell, and it is in a language you don't understand, you don't know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you speak Latin, that's wonderful. If you speak Aramaic or Greek or, you know, whatever it is, that's great. But if you don't understand what you're saying, why are you saying it? <laughs> you, don't, you don't know. Somebody wrote it, and it must be right, because it's on the Internet. Mm-hmm. It's about exerting control, and I think this is what why spell testing has a bad reputation, because it is about taking yeah. control of your destiny, and mm-hmm. authorities have, of all kinds, secular, religious, no one likes an independent person. Mm-hmm. Um, when, they, when, they, when someone wants to be your boss, they don't want you to be independent. So this right. is your your opportunity to create your destiny, to create the type of life that you want. And so, you know, 5,000 spells is, is nothing. I mean, I mean, it's the tip of the iceberg. I could write another book of another 5,000. Exactly. There are, there, there are, you know, it's, it's, sand, it's grains of sand on the, on the beach. Mm-hmm. In, in, innumerable. And the spells are created by people. The magical energy is natural. That's just there. But the spells themselves are created by human beings. So, you know, we're all human beings and we can create, you know, we can, we can tweak and we can expand and we can, you should never do a spell that doesn't make you, you know, that, you know, if you've got a little uneasy feeling about, that's your intuition telling you mm-hmm. something isn't right here. And if yeah. you're not paying attention, you know, your intuition is such an important part of the process that mm-hmm. if you're not, if you're not listening to your intuition, you're almost dooming your spell to be wonky. Mm-hmm. And it's easy enough to make a wonky spell when you have the best of intentions. <laughs> you know, it just, it happens. But Ambivalent it, desires also. You know, you're asking yeah. for something because you, 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 know, you think you want it and maybe part of you wants it. Um, mm-hmm. you know, but maybe a little part of you doesn't really want it. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's it. If you have any doubt, and you know, yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, if you have any doubt right. when you're casting a spell, it's not going to work. And I've told this story before, and I'll tell it quickly. I was trying, I was writing a, um, one of the spell books, and so I said, I'm going to try out this spell, and it was to have somebody call you, you know, one of those kind of spells. Mm. And there was somebody that I did need to talk to, so I go ahead and make this spell, but this was someone that I didn't know that well. So the spell was fine. But the execution was poor. The execution had doubt, you know. So I'm doing this spell, I'm, you know, blah, 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 and you're going to call me, do, 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 please, whatever. Um, and the funniest thing happened because it was on Skype. I said, call me on Skype. So about five minutes later, my Skype rings, and it was that person. Wow. But immediately, this connection was broken. Yeah. And couldn't get back to him. You know, so it was just that doubt that I had put in while doing it. I mean, it it, it hit home. It needed to go where it needed to go. But yeah. my doubt made Skype go, uh-uh, you don't want it that bad. Click, you know, that kind of thing. And and that that's very important when you're casting a spell. You have to have your intention. You have to believe that it's going to work. You have to kind of almost even um, feel like it's it's done by the time you say it. You know, you just have to be real sure of yourself. Well, I think one of the techniques, and part of the thing is, you know, is is you, you the techniques that drive a spell. You can't keep repeating them, but one of the techniques, a spell should be, if there is a spoken component, component it should be in the present tense, because mm-hmm. when you speak, I will be happy. Well, that's tomorrow, mm-hmm. and you know, you know, the old song, tomorrow never comes. Um, I am happy. I mm-hmm. am healthy. I, you know. So and so loves me. I mean, everybody loves me. You know, whatever, whatever it is, and it's yeah. hard because, especially things like um, healing rituals, you know, mm-hmm. it's not true. I, and you know, you're, you, you know, you know that you are not healthy, and that's why you're doing this. And you know, you know, you're you're lonely, and that's why you're 
you know, you're 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 trying to bring love into your life or wh- whatever it is, and it's it, it's mm-hmm. often very painful. And yeah. one of the reasons you you may want to do it behind closed doors is because how personal it mm-hmm. gets. It's it's for the privacy and the ability to go in these very very deep places that are are hard to go to, and at the end to to visualize to see the result of your spell as if it exists. So, mm-hmm. you know, if it's a money spell, see yourself, you know, see yourself just like, you know, counting those bills. If it's a love spell, see yourself, you know, happy in love. If you're, you know, healthy, you know, you have the baby, what, 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 whatever, whatever it is that you need, see it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the more concrete you can make it, the more precise the language, the more concrete the vision, the more likely it is to to actually work. And I think, I, speaking for myself and I know from other people, when you have a certain amount of experience, when the spell is over, you'll have a good sense of whether it worked or not. Because, mm-hmm. there's, you know, there's kind of like a click almost, like you, you could feel it. Yeah. It's just sort of like a, if nothing happens, it's like a flat feeling. It's like, you know, you're trying to turn on the lights and, you know, the electricity is out. Nothing's mm-hmm. happening. Um, but, but that comes with experience. And there's only yeah. one way to get experience. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to get there. Hands on, just by doing. I've got a couple of questions from the chat room. Let me, let's, so not to get to the point that we forget them. Um, Title wants to know um, how to tap into our intuition in our spell work, how not to undermine it after the work is done. It's a really good question. And how important intent is. There you go. Kind of three three phases. After the work is done, you know, and it depends what it's for. Depending what it's for, sometimes, you know, I like to layer spells. You, Mm -hmm. You know, especially something like a protection spell. Sometimes, you know, you, 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 or cleansing, you know, you don't have to do just one spell. You can do, you know, sort of a series, and, and sometimes that gives you more confidence. But mm-hmm. um, the, the issue is more <laughs> intuition. Um, it, it, it's hard. And I mean, that, that sort of, you know, the, uh, the, the Oracle of Apollo, Know Thyself you have to really sort of do like an inner x-ray of yourself and get a sense of who you are and what your experiences have been. People who um, come out of abusive situations, people who showed psychic ability as a child in families that then kind of beat it out of them, um, or, you know, or scared people. Um, if, if, if you, you know, if, if you went to school and freaked people out with your psychic ability, they were mean to you, you know, sometimes that causes you to shut down certain uh-huh. kinds of different kinds of abuse, um, being gaslighted a lot. Those are things that then make you second guess yourself. Uh-huh. And sometimes we don't, you know, we don't know. And, and it's often if we're a person with a lot of fear. Are we, uh, is, is it really our intuition or is it you know, are we being driven by fear? Mm-hmm. And what I recommend for that is th- that that's not that's not something that will be fixed right away. That's something mm-hmm. that's a process. And right. um, meditation, really stilling your mind um, and being trying to get yourself into a very calm place where you can examine your emotions and and learn to recognize because often sometimes it's fear and sometimes it is intuition and trying to um, and sometimes it's hand in hand um, and sometimes coming from those kind of you know I I am fairly certain I saved my life once because um, if someone tried to lure me someplace but I I I did come from a background with a lot of fear and I wasn't going anywhere. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that fear probably helped my intuition in that situation. Yeah. Somebody who was more trusting might have just gone. You know, it, yeah. going would have been the polite thing to do. So, mm-hmm. and, and often, you know, we're so concerned about being polite that we don't listen to our our gut instincts. Right. Um, I find that working with a sacred being who is really 
good, you know, and really righteous and, you know, has no edges. That, you know, working out that kind of trust sometimes helps. And I'm, I'm thinking very much of Kuan Yin. Uh-huh. You know, Kuan Yin, who, you know, who hears, who hears the cries of the world, the, you know, the, the yes. goddess of mercy. Mm-hmm. Kuan Yin, Obatala, and, um, you know, that, that, that developing that relationship, having someone who, who you can be confident who won't harm you, the Archangel, mm-hmm. you know, Michael Archangel, Raphael Archangel, um, I, yeah. I think that's very helpful. And mm-hmm. meditating in the High Priestess Guard. Yes. I, I find helps, for, you know, from, from, from the tarot deck. And yeah. That's very much about accessing and, and honing and finding that intuition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got another question from Sherry, and she wants to know if spells can create entities. There are spells that can create entities. It's not easy. To, I mean, um, you know, pulpas. There, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's it's not easy to do. Um, I, I, I mean, the short answer is yes. <laughs> yes, they exist. Um, mm-hmm. They are hard. <laughs> they mm-hmm. are hard to do, and you know, I I think it's not something that is. Um, Out of all the things to work, I mean, if, if 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 you want to do it, so I mean, if you're looking at, it, if that's a positive question, boy, I want to create an entity. Um, mm-hmm. y- yes, it can be done. It takes a lot of research. Um, you should be looking at um, the um, the magical traditions of the Himalayas, mm-hmm. Tibet, and Nepal, and you know, India. And I mean, there 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 are you know there you know th- that is where the you know knowledge lies or starts. If you are asking because you're afraid that you may have created an entity, um, it's hard to do. It's it's not like and it's not something you will probably do by accident, unless you are you know inc- you know I I never say never you know maybe like somebody's incredibly powerful and they did it by accident, but but mm-hmm. you'll know because that won't be your only accident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, you'll be doing that stuff right and left, and you'll know that there is something going on. It, it is, uh, it, it is um, very. It takes years and years of practice. It takes mm-hmm. um, a lot of ritual, and it, 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 you will know if it's been done. Mm-hmm. But, but on your hypothetically, sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so here's what, I, I don't know why this popped into my head the other day while I was kind of thinking about things to talk about. But when a spell doesn't happen to work, for me yeah. anyway, I usually blame myself for not having the proper intent or focus. And no, uh, no, so I, I, that's my favorite. I, I mean, that's actually half of my half of my workshop on six of the spell testing is why spells don't work, and there are a lot mm-hmm. of reasons why. And I, I think sometimes the spells that don't work are are really good lessons. I mean, cause sometimes you're right. Sometimes it's just that the intent was not proper. And sometimes it's something in the execution. And sometimes it is, um, you know, we live in a world where no one pays attention to anything anymore. We're all multitaskers. Um, Mm -hmm. um, You know, and sometimes we just don't have the focus, we don't have the privacy. I'm thinking there is, um, I, I think I wrote it the best, actually, in Magic When You Need It, but it's it's um there's a real old school hoodoo spell that involves a green devil candle for getting um you know having debts repaid to you, and I have done it twice and the first time it didn't work but I knew it you know I had no privacy, I couldn't focus I kept getting you know I mm-hmm. I kept getting interrupted I I, I live with lots of people it just it it, it wasn't happening. Um, yeah. And then the second time, I was house sitting for some, I was dog sitting for someone, and I had the time and the privacy, and it worked. Mm-hmm. So, I, I know exactly why it didn't work. Sometimes we ask for things that are not good for us, and if you mm-hmm. keep casting that spell, it will work. But sometimes we have guardian angels that that I think protect us from our own intentions. You know. Every time, and I mean, you know, every time you open a newspaper and they have arrested a serial killer and the neighbors all say he's a Boy Scout leader and all the neighbors say, oh, he was the nicest man, and he's mm-hmm. got a wife. And that wife maybe worked really hard to marry that man. She thought he was whatever. Well, you know, now maybe she's got 
some regret. <laughs> so, so sometimes we think we want something and we don't, and we do want it, but we don't have the whole story. We, we want something, we want the job that seems like the perfect opportunity, but if we get it, we won't get the better one that comes afterwards. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's all kinds of things. So there's an interplay with taking control of your destiny and, and also letting life lead you, you know, so that, that combination of being proactive and reactive. Um, yeah. Sometimes it is ambivalence, you know, I, I uh-huh. think it's um, a lot of money spells, you don't really think you deserve it, mm-hmm. and so really what you need to work on first is, um, you know, developing a sense of self-worth, because yeah. if you don't think you're good enough, it's like driving with the brakes on. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of, um, you know, you, you, you have cast a spell to get this great job, but really in your heart, you want to run away and paint. Mm-hmm. Well, so, you know, I was... I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> well, no, I was going to say, I was kind of leading up to what, you know, you were saying too, because I got to thinking that perhaps maybe a spell fails because the universe is not allowing it. Now, that made sense for a minute. But then the other side of my brain started cranking, and I thought, well, is that possible, given the fact that we do have free will? How much do you think the universe can or can't do as long as we have the free will to do what we're supposed to do? I mean, they give us the free will. I mean, we have free will, but I mean, it's, you know, we have free will up to a point. I mean, some Mm -hmm. of us are, you know, I mean, life is not fair. (laughs) You know, some of us are born with more opportunities than others. Some of us are born with, you know, supportive families and, um, and, 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 the kind of looks that other people appreciate, you know, a lot of, you know, you know, sometimes we're, you know, being just being in the right place at the right time, you could look the same and you go to one place and they think you're gorgeous and you go someplace else and, you know, no one, you know, no one gives you a second look. Um, you know, some of us are born with, 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 you know, some of us are not born with all our four limbs, I mean, or, or our health. I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, so, Within within the cons, you know, within within the boundaries of the cards we've been dealt, there is free will, and I mean, I, I think that it is, you know, they're all choices. We're always coming to crossroads and making choices, even if they're bad choices. There are choices, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, I think that. If it was simply, and I mean, and I think there are people with real, you know, and when I say will, I mean it. In, in the occult sense of the world, do what that will. It's not about you know. It's not a synonym for want. It's that, it's that vitality and that energy. Your 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 inner will. And there are people with very strong wills and very um, clear focus, and they can cut a path for themselves better than other people. And that is maybe something to strive for to build up that will, to build up that focus, to to really. Um, key into what is it that you really want to accomplish, what is it that you want to do or have versus kind of, you know, floundering, you know, uh, you know, you know, but, but those are also personalities because some people, you know, some of us are just flounderers. Um, <laughs> and, and I mean, and sometimes it's there's true. a joy to floundering, you know, so, I mean, that, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying that critically, some, sometimes there's that sort of, you know, you know, like, uh, you know, the card, the fool, sometimes that, that, that kind of meandering quality brings us mm-hmm. to some really interesting places. Um, but I think it's that interaction, and I think sometimes, sometimes there are blocks, and I mean, it, cleansing, one of the things is part of the spell casting pro- There are two kinds of spells. There are the really spontaneous spells that you just, you know, you have a, you have a crisis, and you go into crisis mode, and you have to do something right now, and you don't have to, you know, and you walk into your kitchen, and you see what you've got, and it is good if you've got some experience, because you're just going to do something, and sometimes mm-hmm. those spells really work really well, because you are so focused, and then you have spells that you have time, you know, I'm going to do what I, you know, you know, I'm going to do it in that one, and I've got some time, and I'm going to plan, and I'm going to do, or I'm going to do it on Friday, and I've got plans, you know, and if you're doing that, it's really good to start with some cleansing. Mm-hmm. Do some cleansing work 
first. Cleanse yourself, cleanse the space, cleanse your tools, um, mm-hmm. get yourself in a good psychological framework. Um, mm-hmm. It's not, if things are not going your way, inside Thoughts and Spells, there are three sections. There is a section devoted to unblocking, there mm-hmm. is a section devoted to the evil eye, and there is a section devoted to hexes and curses. And all those things are reasons for why things might not be working out for you. Mm-hmm. You know, the ultimate, the end result may be the same, but the, the roots are different. The, the evil eye is often cast accidentally. Mm-hmm. If you are with angry, jealous people, that can happen, and there are ways to protect against that. Hexes and curses are deliberate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have been targeted. So, you know, that's not an accident. That's not someone just having a bad day and their energy kind of flowing at you. And then there's unblocking. There are blocking issues, and that's just that's nobody's fault necessarily. No, there are pieces of furniture that accumulate dust. There are people that kind of accumulate spiritual dust, and, and it needs to be cleaned off. Um, and when you clean it off, things will go better for you. Mm-hmm. So those are also, you know, when the spells don't work, when the universe seems to be against you, instead of, you know, this is not an art for the passive. It's an art for people who, who, who want to, not that we all don't have a bad day and we need to go to bed and pull the covers over our heads once in a while, but mm-hmm. but then you, you have to get out of bed. And, you you know, if the universe is not cooperative, then, then you, you do have to work your will to cut your way through that. Um, mm-hmm. and, and there are, you know, luckily, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> Thank it, goodness. Right, although you can. If you want to reinvent the wheel, you can. There's nothing to stop you from doing it. But I couldn't. You, they would all be bumpy. It would work. <laughs> you but, know, but, but, but there, there are spells for everything. So if you feel that, you know, your free will is impeded, then there's a spell for that, too. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, it, it again, dealing with free will and spell work, Never, ever, well, I can't tell, I mean, people do all kinds of things, but I would never do any kind of spell that interfered with anybody's free will, because that's just not kosher to me. I mean, it doesn't, you know, it's not the right thing it to do. It is Although always people... better to work from, I mean, it, it, there is, um, there is, there is, you know, a quality of, of reaping what you sow. And mm-hmm. if you, whether it's the threefold law, the sevenfold law, the, you know, 2000 full law <laughs> if you are sending out on a regular basis and everybody has a bad day you know you can't beat yourself up too much everybody has a bad day and then you can mm-hmm. make up for that but if you are sending out negative energy and anger and resentment and you know casting that evil eye um, if you are doing that on a regular basis it comes back there, there will be no happy what's the point there mm-hmm. will be no happiness for you Right. You know, you want to be working from a position of love and respect, and it is. You you want to work for the benefit of something, as opposed to ripping something down. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does, and I've always, you know, if I'm angry at somebody for doing something, whatever it may be, I'm not going to curse them. I'm not going to you know, ask that, you know, their fingernails fall off one at a time, <laughs> you know, whatever. But I I do believe that an eye for an eye spell is fair. Um, if you give back what you got, I don't think, I mean, depends on how bad it was, obviously. I think but, in all situations and circumstances. Yeah. Well, true. I just, yeah. I guess I feel safer with an eye for an eye spell because, you know, <laughs> it's just, I'm not doing anything a thousand times worse than what I got. And and honestly, I have to say, it is so rare that I even need to think about that, that, you know, it, it's not even worth mentioning. But, you know, rather than sending out curses or, or whatever and plagues and, and pestilence on people, you know, if if... Somebody lied to you, you know, or or did something. Well, just give it back to them. Show them, you know. It's like when you're growing up and you're you do something, and your parents make a point of saying, "Well, suppose, all right, suppose you slap your mom, you know, your little kid, you go wang, you know," and 
she hits you back. Then you realize what you did to her and how it felt kind of thing. And I don't know if I'm making any sense or not. No, but I, I understand what you're saying. You know, I, I am asked a lot, like, you know, how do you practice? How do you practice spells? And there are three categories of spells that are really good for practice. And mm-hmm. one of them is protection. Mm-hmm. Um, to make sure those situations don't happen and that you're not put in that position if you've been considering, you know, it, because, you know, it's like preventive medicine. You know, uh-huh. b- before before you have to consider, you know, what kind of steps to take, let's, let's put that bubble of protection around us. And, it, you know, protection spells, and there's like a lot of them, and it, play with them. See which ones work for you. See what, you know, cast a spell and then see what kind of a day you, or a week you have. Um, and then tweak as desired. And, you know, get a sense of, and, and listen to yourself. Cleansing spells, we were discussing intuition before. Cleansing spells are the other one. Cleansing spells, because um, it's really immediate. Like, you know, you cast a spell and at the end, like, you know, you don't know. Like, did it work? How, how long do I wait? These are all, you know, all the anxiety-provoking things. But cleansing spells are really good because when they're done, you should feel cleaner, spiritually uh-huh. cleaner, uh, psychically cleaner. You know, your aura should be cleaner. And if it doesn't, if, if you don't feel that little bit of uplift, um, and in terms of intuition, I, you know, when I say you'll feel cleaner, I, I know there's somebody out there going, but what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Well, well do them and pay attention to how you feel and pay attention to sort of the nuances of your emotions and your thoughts and your feelings and and, and see how, you know, and, and, and you'll, you'll figure it out. But you can't do too many of those. Um, and they're all different. You know, there are spells with water and there are spells with smoke and sound mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff. And the last one um, is money spells. Because mm-hmm. as opposed to prosperity, and prosperity and money are two different things. Proster- right. Prosperity is a state. It is a state where things are going well on a, on a regular basis and you have, you have enough and maybe, maybe more than enough on a regular mm-hmm. basis. Money is, I need $100 now. Right. Um, I need $1,000 next week. Money spells are good because you're either going to get, you know, and, and the worst thing that will happen is nothing and you don't have the money and you're mm-hmm. in the same old situation. You know, there's mm-hmm. no, like, there's nothing demonic that will happen to you. You, know, just, <laughs> you Well, you know, usually the worst thing, you know, the worst thing that will happen with if you cast a spell is that it doesn't work and you are left in the same miserable place you were. Yeah. But, yeah. And I know, and I can hear somebody's protesting Oh no, no personal gain. What well, you know, I can't do a money spell. So do it to hone your talents and your skills. And if you are not comfortable keeping that money, there are a whole lot of people and dogs and cats and charities that do need that money. And think about all the good things you know you can do with that magical money. You don't have to keep it. You can donate it to you know, whoever touches your heart. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, you know, I look at big fluffy dog rescue every like, you know, and I wish I could give the money more money. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, magic up that money and do it. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you don't, you don't, or, or, or save it for something. Um, you know, you don't have to, you know, if you're uncomfortable with it, don't, don't hold on to it. Do something really positive with it. Right. Because, yeah. you know, at its best, money is a tool for good. Yeah, and if you pay it forward, that's yeah. another feather yeah. in your cap. Yeah. We are quickly running out of time. I mean, this yeah. is a topic that we can talk about. We're going to have to finish up on another show. <laughs> We're going to have to do a sequel to this show because, honest to God, I have a whole bunch of questions that we didn't even get to. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, so we'll we'll plan on that. But in the meantime, um, where can people find out more about you, um, the calendar of events, the services you offer? I'm going your- to New Orleans um, next week, and I am going to be at, I, I mean, I don't even know what I'm telling people because um, <laughs> it's sold out, but Hexfest is not this coming weekend, it's the following weekend, like the 22nd, the 23rd, it is mm-hmm. at the Bourbon Orleans Hotel, I think the vending room is open to the public, and I will be selling books, so... 
come on down. And um, I am on. I, I am online. I my uh, website is my name, judicaillis.com, J-U-D-I-K-A-I-L-L-E-S.com, Facebook, Twitter. Um, You're all over the place. I'm all over the place. You're easy to find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not hard to find. <laughs> well, that that's a good thing. That's I a hope good so. thing. <laughs> no, it really is. So, um, yeah, so anybody, you know, go over to Judica's website, have a look around. Um, there's more to this lady than meets the eye. And, again, we're going to have to follow up on this show at some point because way too many questions that haven't been answered. It's it's really a long topic. It's hard we'll to just... We'll do it just, again. Yeah, we'll do it it's again. hard to put we'll it We'll do it in, again. When I come back from Hexfest. Just let me know. I'll call. Happy to do it anytime. Okay, Great. And um, so thank you again for popping in tonight. It's always a pleasure having you here. Thank you. And as always, I want to thank everybody for listening in as well. And until next time, everybody, blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. This has been another edition of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Be sure to tune in next week at the same time for another great guest and more cauldron stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2014. Moonlight Hall by Kevin McLeod. Licensed through Incompetech.com.